Okay, good morning. So what uh, we were doing last time is we were looking at the stability analysis for heat equation. Right, we were doing the linearized stability analysis for heat equation. To remind you as to why we were doing that, I had suggested that uh, FTCS was unstable because the second derivative term that showed up in the modified equation for FTCS had the wrong sign was negative right the coefficient for the second derivative was negative right and I had suggested that we could add artificial dissipation of our own right we could just add the second derivative term and try to knock out that negative term possibly make it even positive okay that was the suggestion and then I had sort of casually mentioned that oh you can add as much dissipation as you want you can add as much artificial dissipation as you want okay that is fine. So, right. So, what we are looking at now is what is the effect of this artificial dissipation. So, if you add this art, if you can add as much as you want, right, then we had concluded that the equation with that much artificial dissipation was almost like heat equation. If you added an enormous amount of artificial dissipation, that was like heat equation, and was there a consequence to that? So, we are just looking at the stability analysis of heat equation. We had already done it, right. I will just quickly repeat it. So, what did we have? The heat equation, 1D heat equation looks like that. If you use FTCS, if you apply FTCS to this, again the problem by itself is not complete, right. I mean you have to apply the boundary, I have to tell you what are the boundary conditions, what is the actual physical problem that we are solving. But since this stability analysis, von Neumann stability analysis uh, is only at a grid point, right. We can just discretize this and ask the answer that question. So, FTCS applied to this is UPQ plus 1 is UPQ plus uh, I will say lambda times UP plus 1Q minus 2UPQ plus UP minus 1Q where lambda is kappa delta t by delta x squared okay and we went when we went through the same process and we went through the same process of writing up plus 1q as e power i n delta x up q incidentally in some books you will see this called the shift operator because it shifts us by one grid point okay. So some, some books you may see this called the shift operator okay. So doing this what did we get? We got up plus 1 upq plus 1 divided by upq which is g the gain. What this what did this work out to be? One plus two lambda times cos theta minus one. And we wanted the modulus of this to be less than one, and therefore we got the condition that zero less than lambda less than one half. Is that fine? That is zero less than kappa delta t by delta x squared less than one half. So if kappa is very large, so the question is what dominates, what was the CFL condition, the regular condition that we call the CFL condition that was 0 less than a delta t by delta x less than 1 okay and depending on the relative magnitudes of a and kappa you will end up applying the appropriate stability condition. So if you make your if you make your artificial dissipation for the heat equation it is kappa but if, for, if you add it as artificial dissipation it would be mu2. If you make the artificial dissipation too large, so large that mu2 dominates for all practical purposes it becomes like heat equation. Then this is really the stability condition that you need to be worried about okay. 
So if A is of the order of 1 and kappa is of the order of 1 million then this is really a stability condition that you have to be bothered about fine okay. Of course in general you could say that it seems that the general scheme general explicit scheme right using 3 points seems to be of the form u p q plus 1 is some a times u p q uh, u p plus 1 q plus b times u p q plus c times u p minus 1 q. Am I making sense? In general an explicit scheme involving the points p plus 1 p p minus 1 would look something like this okay maybe what you can do is you can try out just try out see how you do the stability analysis for this just substitute go through the same process just go through the same process and you will see that uh, you can you can come up with a stability condition in terms of a b and c okay you can make a general statement you can come up with a stability condition in terms of a b and c you can try it out if you have any difficulties get back to me is that right okay so this is as far as uh, the 1D heat equation is concerned. So you can add artificial dissipation you have to be very careful how much artificial dissipation that you add right you cannot add too much of it. The other thing that you want to remember is the artificial dissipation term that you are going to add you are going to add to the equation that you are solving that is if the equation uh, way back when I told you that u was a perturbation but we will go back to a situation where u is the variable that you are solving for. So the equation that you are solving is a do u do t plus a do u do x and you want this to be equal to 0 you want this to be equal to 0 but instead of 0 you are going to solve this you are clearly not solving the equation that you set out to solve okay you are clearly not so it is not as though you are doing FTBS setting sigma equals 1 right so the solution is contaminated so from your point of view you want to keep mu, mu 2 as small as possible you want to keep mu 2 as small as possible is that fine okay. So and we, we rationalize this we justified this saying anyway I am solving the modified equation right so I am just I am just fixing the modified equation to my satisfaction. So this term possibly can be picked exactly from the modified equation so when I do a demonstration I will actually show you how to pick this right how we would pick this term we will try out a few things and see what it does to the modified equation okay. So in a later class I will actually do a demo of uh, deriving the modified equation but in a automated fashion and then uh, we will see whether we can add different terms and see what that does okay right. In this conversation I am going to do a little aside now we are going to take a step aside right because I am with heat equation I am going to continue with heat equation just for a brief period right and then we will come back to this conversation right. I want to look at 2D heat equation simply because of the stability condition that I have got right simply because of the nature of the stability condition that I have got I am going to make a point I am going to use it to make a point I want to look at 2D heat equation. 2D heat equation is do u do t equals kappa do squared u do x squared plus do squared u do y squared. it is an isotropic material so kappa there is only one thermal conductivity right thermal conductivity is not changing based on orientation okay. So if I did FTCS for this if I did FTCS for this what would I get so now I will use the superscript for time because I will otherwise I will have too, too many subscripts in the, uh, in the, in the denominator. I will use P and R for X and Y and that is Q plus 1 okay Q is in time this is along X that is along Y UTR Q fine plus lambda X UP plus 1 R Q minus 2 u p r q plus u p minus 1 r q plus 
plus lambda sub y u p r plus 1 q minus 2 u p r q plus u p r minus 1 q where lambda x is kappa delta t by delta x squared lambda y is kappa delta t by delta y squared. So t, to keep life simple I am going to make delta x equals delta y equals h okay. So I can then combine these, I can then combine these. So what does this give me? UPR q plus 1 equals all of this. I am going to now do the same thing that I did for in the 2D case what I did for the one in the 1D case right. So I, uh, I do not know whether I can I, if I just write it out whether it is going to be a hassle for you. So this is UPR q maybe I do not skip a step plus lambda times what is this going to be remember del, now del, delta x and delta y are the same right. So i n delta x right you will have i n delta x and i m delta y okay i n h and i m y. So that is going to give you two sets of thetas okay maybe I uh, will just write it out and then I will explain what I am doing. So this will give me a e power i theta uh, minus 2 plus e power minus i theta times u p r q and the other one will give me a lambda e power i uh, alpha minus 2 plus e power minus i alpha u p r q where theta is i theta is n delta x and uh, alpha is m delta y but we have decided delta x equals delta y but the wave numbers are still different okay. However much we simplify the x and y coordinates keep on falling apart it does not matter okay. So what does it give me? Therefore the gain when you take one time step what is the gain 1 plus is going to be very similar to what we had earlier 2 lambda cos theta minus 1 plus 2 lambda cos alpha minus 1 okay and when is mod g less than 1. When is mod g less than 1? So you can combine these two basically right when uh, because you basically have to look at when these values are the largest. So that will correspond I will, I will let you work that out that will correspond to 0 less than lambda less than 1 by 4 okay. Just, with, just like we did in last class you can just work out mod g less than 1 and you will see this is the condition that we get right and we can sort of guess that if it were 3D Laplace equation it will be 0 less than lambda less than 1 sixth okay you will just get one extra term for the z coordinate okay right. But this is really what I was interested in this condition when I saw the one half I said okay let us just let us take an aside and look at. So lambda equals 1 fourth what happens here when lambda is 1 fourth what happens to this equation when lambda is 1 fourth. What happens to that equation when lambda is 1 fourth? When lambda is 1 fourth you get uh, you get a very familiar looking equation u p r q plus 1 is 1 fourth u p r q plus oh sorry t plus 1 r q 
u p minus 1 r q plus minus 4 is that right that gets cancelled plus u p r plus 1 q plus u p r minus 1 q right which was our iterative solution to Laplace's equation fine this is a iterative solution to Laplace's equation we will revisit this we will revisit this I could not I could not resist taking this aside we will revisit this later but what this basically says is marching heat equation in time is the same as sweeping Lap, uh, Laplace's equation in space okay. So now there are two different ways by which we can get solutions to Laplace equation either you take Laplace's equation add a time derivative and solve the unsteady equation and allow this solution to evolve in time or you do an iterative method Gauss Seidel or whatever it is or Gauss Jordan and if you are doing uh, Jacobi iteration not Gauss Jordan if you are doing Jacobi iteration it looks like all you are doing is it looks like all you are doing is solving heat equation. What if lambda instead of being one fourth were one eighth what would you get can you guess lambda instead of being one fourth if I take lambda equals one eighth what would you get. That is like picking some kind of a relaxation parameter that is like picking some kind of a relaxation parameter anyway if you want we can have this as I said if you want we can have this conversation later but that is like picking the a relaxation parameter. So you, you see if you have upr q plus 1 if you picked it as 1 8 right you would get a linear combination of upr at q right omega times that and 1 minus omega times that whichever way you want it you will get a linear combination okay you will get a linear combination the only constraint that you have is the only constraint that you have is that you have a stability condition here okay you have a stability condition here maybe I can maybe I can work it out instead of in, since I have gone down this path maybe I can just work it out what happens when lambda is 1 8 what do we get from that equation can you just tell me upr q plus 1 equals upr q lambda is 1 8 maybe you can just uh, read it out that is uh, plus 1 by 8 up plus 1 r q minus 2 up r q plus up minus 1 r q plus 1 8 up r plus 1 q minus 2 up r q plus up r minus 1 q okay there are four of these therefore it becomes half so that becomes one half upr q plus one half up plus 1 r q plus up minus 1 r q plus up r plus 1 q plus up r minus 1 q divided by 4. So the 1 8 I have written it as an average plus 1 half this is like taking omega equals half this is like taking omega equals half okay I do not know how many of you tried when I asked said why do not you try SOR with Jacobi I do not know if you have tried it you try SOR with Jacobi anyone well if you have tried it if you have tried it you would have found that for omega greater than 1 it would not have worked right it would not work because for Jacobi iteration you have a stability condition that says lambda has to be less than 1 fourth that is omega can only be at the most 1 fine Gauss Seidel it can go up to 2 Jacobi it cannot Jacobi there is a stability condition that says that lambda is less than 1 fourth or which corresponds to omega equals 1 okay you may if lambda is greater than 1 fourth you would not get the average right and it would not work fine okay 
right. So this sort of connects, I wanted to connect what we were doing with Laplace's equation, right, with all this uh, evolving in time. I want you to understand that, so marching in time to a steady state solution is the same as sweeping in space. So there is no sense getting worked up saying that, oh you are going evolving in time, I am just doing sweeping in space, uh, I am not, I am not, you have an extra coordinate, I do not have that coordinate, no, they are both basically the same, right. But what it does is it gives you a different perspective, the same algorithm, it gives you a different way of looking at it. So as long as you keep that in mind that whether I am marching in time or sweeping in space, okay, that there is a, there is an equivalence, okay, that we are fine, is that okay, right. So that is the, that is the end of the aside that we will get back to, we will get back to where we were, that is the end of that aside, we will get back to where we were. What we are talking about now is how much dissipation can we add, we saw that if you add too much dissipation, if you add way too much dissipation, the stability condition changes right and the stability condition gets actually worse, the time steps that you have to take will get much smaller. So you have to be very careful whether how much dissipation, you may be tempted to add a lot of artificial dissipation that does not quite work. The second thing is if you add a lot of, if you add a lot of artificial, the artificial dissipation that you add right now the way we are adding it, uh, you could say we are adding it explicitly right, we are adding it at the current time level, the way you are adding the artificial dissipation actually contaminates the solution right. So if you say, hey wait a minute, I am not actually solving the equation that I set out to solve, anyway I am solving the modified equation, I am going to add artificial dissipation, that is one argument. The other thing is, look you know you are solving the modified equation, instead of improving it so that the modified equation gets closer to the actual equation, why are you making it worse, right, that is a counter argument that you can get, right. So we have, we have to be a bit careful how you handle this, but you have to have an awareness that whether you like it or not, when you solve the problem, there is numerical dissipation that is showing up because the modified equation is not the same as the original equation. So you have to have, have an awareness as to what it is, right. The second thing is if you are going to add something to it, you have to add it carefully, right, okay. Let me try to, let me try to come to this problem in a different, from a different direction. Let me try to come to this problem from a different direction, okay. What if you had do u do t plus a do u do x equals 0 and I did not add, I have been writing this and I did not do that or what if you had instead of a do u do x, you had either a as a function or you had, you had something else, you had some u. Right, the kind of equation we are used to in fluid mechanics would be something like this. Where u is the solution and therefore you do not know what it is, right, you do not know what it is beforehand. A priori you do not know what, what is the value of u, okay. So what if, what if you had the situation, how do you do, how do you ensure that you are doing FTBS? How do you ensure that you are doing FTBS, right? The, we will look at this equation in greater detail a little later, but right now I am using it just for motivation. How do you ensure that you are doing FTBS or I am sorry, how do you make sure that you are using upwinding, right? Not, it is not so much FTBS, but how do you make sure that you are doing upwinding? Right? If you do not know what the sign is, you have a scheme, you do not know what the sign is. How would we make sure that we are doing FTB? So there are different ways by which you could do it. Of course, you could have, you could have a if-then kind of a discretization, right? So the algorithm then becomes it is a true algorithm. You turn around and say, if a is greater than zero, use backward space. If a is less than zero, right? Use forward space. That's a possibility. A equals zero. I don't know, right? a equals 0 of course does something to this particular equation, so life becomes easier, a equals 0 can be a, a headache, right. Again we will see what the, what that headache is at a later time. So the other possibility is that you can ask the question, uh, is there a way for us to create a switch, an automatic mechanism so that I do not have this conditional statement, right, possibility. So the question is what is, what is that quantity? 
and what is this quantity. So if I divide this by 2, right, so if, if, if A is positive, if A is positive this would be 0, right, and this will be, that will be A. If A is negative, this is going to be 0 and this would be, would be A, right, would be A, fine. So now we have something that looks like a switch, something that is 0, 1. So you could then turn around and say that UPQ plus 1, the objective here is I want you to see where we started off with. We started off Laplace equation, central differences, we tried it out, we tried out various things, some things worked, some things did not work. How do you develop these algorithms? What is the way by which we, we, are, we are groping around but as we get along you get better at it, right and there are lots of little, little tools that you can use to construct algorithms. You have to get an idea as to how these things happen. So this is UPQ, I seem to have automatically shifted to a superscript, it does not matter, right, minus A plus mod A by 2 delta T by delta X into what do you want here U P Q minus U P minus 1 Q Q thank you minus A minus mod A U P plus 1 Q minus U P Q, is that fine? So this would do it, this would automatically switch, it is one way to do it, this would automatically switch. You do not have the conditional statements but then you are doing a lot of work, right, you do not have the conditional statements, you have eliminated the conditional statements but you are doing a lot of work, you are going to evaluate these terms independent of whether that is 0 or not, right, you are going to add them all up and throw them away. And you are going to add them all up and it may turn out that what you have, fortunately here you are not going to end up with round off error because they are identical, right. But these kinds of algorithms you have to be a bit careful. So you are going to, you are going to calculate all of this and just chuck it because that happens to be 0. What is the other possibility? What is the other possibility? In the last class we saw something. What is the other possibility? What was the difference between central difference and forward difference or backward difference? You remember? I want to add something to this. What was the difference between central difference and backward space or central space and backward space? Do you remember? Second derivative, but the coefficient is very important. Okay. So it is something like I will add mod A because we do not know the sign of A. I will add mod A, right. Uh, delta x by 2 dou square that is I hope I do not want the continuous thing I want the u p plus 1 q minus 2 u p q you can go check this from your last class plus u p minus 1 q divided by delta x. Is that okay? Is that fine? Okay, that is fine. Why did I do mod A here? I do not know the sign. I, I want you to check that 
both FTCS and FTBS what is the difference between FTCS, FTCS minus FTBS, FTCS minus FTFS okay and see what you get. So if you add this quantity what is it going to do? It is going to convert the central difference to backward space you understand and by taking this sign out of the game I have essentially made it made sure that whether it is forward difference or whether whether this is positive or negative that is going to cancel out you can just try it out and see okay and it will always be upwind that is another way to do it you add the right kind of artificial dissipation right you add, write the, add the right kind of artificial dissipation. Of course from a stability point of view what we are talking about earlier I cannot afford to have this A to be negative that is pretty obvious that is mu2 negative right that is mu2 negative does that make sense that is mu2 if, I, if A is negative that means mu2 is negative it is going to diverge right so it is pretty clear that it has to be modulus away that see there are different clues there are different clues that we have as to why we are doing what we do either you you can do it from here to see what is the correction term that I have to do in order to change the central difference scheme to a upwinding scheme or you can look at it from the modified equation that we have got and say oh the coefficient has to be positive is that fine everyone. So there is a way there are clear cut ways by which you can determine what happens when you add a special specific term but the addition of this term does not so it does not eliminate the second derivative term the addition of this term only converts the central difference scheme to a one sided difference one sided first order scheme. So we lost the order you lost the order of the scheme okay are there any questions. So while we are at it while we are at this so this is so we have seen that you can do FT so we have FTCS, FTBS, FTFS right we have to use either FTBS or FTFS depending on which way the stream is flowing. So it is better to do FTCS a centered scheme see this is one way to look at it one argument and just add something to it so that it becomes upwind biased or the other thing is to say that you do upwinding directly right you can get so whether you are doing upwinding so I would say if you are doing this you are also doing upwinding it is very clear if you are doing this you are also doing upwinding right so there is no sense getting into an argument as to whether you are doing central differences or up it is just a matter of is going in order for the error to decay I am going to have dissipation and in order to get the dissipation I need to do something okay. So there is no sense getting into an argument as to whether you are doing central differences or but the minute you say it is FTCS plus a correction term then we can ask the question can I eliminate the higher order can I eliminate the higher order terms and get a more accurate scheme that is a different story right we will look at that as I said when I do the demo okay. Now that we have done this I know in, in the beginning of the class I said I am not going to do a survey of a lot of schemes and so on but I am going to do a few schemes now just to show you just to go on with this philosophy of how do these schemes evolve how do we develop these schemes right and I will get you to a point where uh, you should be if you really want right if you go out look at all the schemes that are out there and you say no I do not like this I have a better idea you should be able to come out with something on your own is that fine okay. So we come here what we will do is and all of these as I said we have clues for these things from what we have done so far we have clues for these things from what we have done so far. So earlier when we derived modified equation what had I suggested what did, when we did modified equation what did we do we expanded we expanded using Taylor series and we substituted for individual terms in Taylor series okay then you can ask the question why not develop a scheme using Taylor series this is a classical technique using Taylor series to solve differential equation that is if you have u p uh, q plus 1 I guess maybe I will stick to the subscript is u p q plus let us do Taylor series delta t dou u dou t at the point p q plus delta t squared by 2 factorial dou squared u dou t squared at the point p q and so on fine 
when we did the modified equation of course we wrote the right hand side also but here I am going to stop at this point I say wait a minute why go there at all we already have a trick what is dou u dou t dou u dou t is minus a dou u dou x again I am back to a greater than 0 that situation where a is greater than 0 and what is dou squared u dou t squared a squared dou squared u dou x squared substitute back u p q plus 1 is u p q plus delta t a dou u dou x is u p plus 1 q minus u p minus 1 q by 2 delta x minus sign I do not know I always forget that minus sign okay fine plus a squared delta t squared by 2 delta x squared I do the open bracket here but I am going to write it here what is it or maybe I will write it in the bottom a squared delta t squared by 2 delta x squared u p plus 1 q minus 2 u p q plus u p minus 1 q how is that we just cooked up a scheme this is called the lax vendorov scheme lax vendorov scheme right all you just basically do is you just go through do a Taylor series expansion classically it is solution to differential equations using Taylor series it was normally done with uh, ODEs I guess this application to PDs they get the credit for it okay. So here you have it FTC is there FTC is there so this would be sigma and that would be sigma squared by 2. fine and the scheme comes with its dissipation added right you can try out you can go through do the stability analysis for this I am not going to do this uh, anymore right these I leave as exercise you can try out the stability analysis for it you can find out the modified equation and see what is the nature of the modified equation right you can try to find out what is the nature of the modified equation is that fine everyone okay what else. I am just going to I am just going to know in a freewheeling fashion connect all the bits and pieces that we have done to see whether we can come up with other schemes that is all right I am just going to do a few of these before we sort of end this whole thing of uh, wave linear wave equation right okay. So I am going to just sort of try 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 around there is something called a two step lax van der method they do the following I will draw the stencil in this case simply because I am actually drawing grid lines simply because it is easier to understand with the grid lines. So this is p plus 1 p p minus 1 p plus 1 at time level q that is q plus 1. I seem to have drawn a line in between I will also draw another line in between here lots of extra lines right. So that is this is a point p q plus 1 basically that is what we want I am going to do this in two steps I am going to do this two different ways right I will tell you what is the two step scheme final two step scheme. So what we can do is you have the value here you have the value here. you had this in between value you could do FTCS and find that. So humor me I will call that p plus half right I know I mean it is a we were counting it is integers but we will call it p plus half p minus half good even with counting I have to make sure I get the sign right right today is my day for negative signs anyway p minus half. So 
then this would be p minus half well you would expect that would be q plus half right so you can see that if there was a way by which i could use ftcs to find that and a way by which i could use ftcs to find that then i could repeat the process and use ftcs between these two to find that is that fine okay two step process the process what I just described now is not the two step lax of process, it is a two step process. So let me write that over first and then I will tell you what is the improvement. So you can say u p uh, minus half, maybe I will go back to superscripts here q plus half equals u p minus half q minus a delta t by delta x u p minus u p minus 1 these are all at q is that fine everyone how do I find that u p minus half q give me a suggestion take the average so I can take the average u p minus half q is u p plus u p plus u p minus 1 divided by 2 fine. So in a similar fashion u p plus half q well it would be the same I mean so obviously you are going to find this value using these two right for each of these intervals you do that so I will go directly to u p q plus 1 so here is the first first suggestion first suggestion up q plus half minus a delta t by delta x we are assuming delta x is are equal everywhere up plus half q minus up minus half does that make sense and any time to find this intermediate value if you do not know it take the average of the neighbors okay everyone it is fine. So do you expect this to be stable using FTCS you expect it to be stable it so should be unstable. before you start the stability analysis you first predict what you expect it to be and see whether you get it right and in order to do the stability analysis you have upq plus 1 remember you have to get this in terms of right hand side has to be all upqs which basically means that you substitute for the p minus halves in terms of p's and p plus 1 you understand get eliminate all the halves that is the easiest way to do it just make the substitutions eliminate all the halves so that you finally get up upq plus 1 in terms of upqs okay take the ratio and you can do the stability analysis fine this is a two step method the two step lax bendroff method you stop at this point and you say wait a minute there is something here why why bother with taking ftcs here again i have the value here if i take a time derivative across this i'm taking a central difference at this point I do FTCS to get that, FTCS to get that, I am sorry FTCS to get that, I do FTCS to get this point, FTCS to get that point, here I can do central time, I can actually do central time, I can get a higher order accuracy in time, I can do a central time, is that fine, I can do CTCS, that means the second step instead of using this, instead of using this in the two step lax Bendroff method, you would write UPQ plus 1 is u p q minus the rest of the stuff central difference in time central difference in space okay one of the reasons why I do not do this is it can get dreary 
right it can get tiresome I am just putting up indices out there right I can already see it on your faces it can get it can get it can be it can vary out okay this is the two step Laxman-Roch method it is done in two steps first you get to q plus half and then you do the full thing full delta t fine okay I did this so that you are aware that you can you do not have to do it it does not have to be done in one step you can do it in multiple steps the time integration can be done in multiple steps in the whole class of Runge Kutta schemes and so on where the time integration is actually done in multiple steps so there are multi step methods right just so that you are aware of it. A third thing that we did right back at the beginning when we were doing finite differences what have we done so far amongst the various things we have done FTCS we have done BTCS and of course we have done lot of other stuff but I am more interested in FTCS and BTCS. Before we derived finite differences using uh, Taylor series we did it for forward difference and backward difference do you remember the first time I introduced central difference what I did you remember what I did I took the average of the forward difference and backward difference right I looked at the truncation error term for forward difference and backward difference and said wait a minute these are the same magnitude but opposite sign why do not I take the average I have forward time central space backward time central space why do not I take the average why do not I take a combination of these two you understand right or better still I can take a weighted average not why just average now we are into things like SOR and you know things so why not just a wait why not a weighted average why not a theta times FTCS plus a 1 minus theta times BTCS that sounds vague right theta equals half would be an average theta equals half would be an average how do we do this theta times UPQ plus 1 equals theta times UPQ minus theta sigma by 2 UP plus 1 minus UP minus 1. What is BTCS? 1 minus theta times what was BTCS sigma by 2 up plus 1 uh, q plus 1 minus up minus 1 q plus 1 plus upq plus 1 equals upq is everybody with me is that fine okay so add them up we will see what we get if you add them up what do you get there is a 1 minus theta upq plus 1 just to point out this always happens a theta upq plus 1 so the theta will go away right so you get a from here a minus sigma by 2 up minus 1 q plus 1 uh, plus upq plus 1 plus sigma by 2 u p plus 1 q plus 1 equals again as I pointed out the theta and minus theta will cancel u p q minus theta sigma by 2 u p plus 1 q minus u p minus 1 q I lost some 1 minus theta somewhere there should be a
I hope that is not too messy, fine, fine and theta equals half, theta equals half, theta equals half you get a very famous technique called the Crank Nicholson technique. But here you would have to solve a system of equations, but clearly you can take various values of theta, right? Clearly you can take various values of theta. I would suggest that you try to do the stability analysis for this, you try to do the stability analysis for the two-step lax Bendroff method. All of these, all of these schemes, p plus one, p, p plus one, p minus one. Q, Q plus 1, both of these schemes represent the differential equation, approximate the differential equation at the midpoint. Both of these schemes represent or approximate the differential equation at the midpoint, fine, okay, okay. So I will see you in the next class. Thank you.